And good morning, everybody. Jim Sinekropi here inside the FingerLakes1.com studios where we are on the eve of another It's a Wonderful Life festival here in Seneca Falls, New York. And I'm fortunate enough to have the actress that played Zuzu in the iconic Frank Capra holiday classic, uh, one of my favorite movies. And if you're watching this, it's likely one of your favorite movies. Uh, but Carolyn Grimes is here in studio with me. And uh, Carolyn, thanks for coming in. Well, thank you for having me. And I always have fun in this wonderful town. Yeah, welcome back to Seneca Falls. This, do you want, are you keeping track of how many years? I think this is the 14th, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how the festival has grown and, um, and everything around it has grown um, and what it means to Seneca Falls. And certainly we, everybody loves seeing you come to town. Um, it's, a, it's a great tie-in for us, for the you know the the movie it, it it's we believe in Seneca Falls that we're the inspiration for the the movie that Frank Capra came here and saw certain aspects of our town and, and put those in the movie and this show isn't going to be about that about all the the details we've done shows about that before but um right off the bat when you do you believe that Seneca Falls is the inspiration for the movie I absolutely do believe that Seneca Falls is the inspiration, I think Frank, Frank Capra came through here and he saw a lot of the things that he visualized in his mind that, and he made it happen when he built the set for Bedford Falls. Mm -hmm. And now you've been here in snowy weather and yeah. this year it looks like we might actually be in the 60s here in December for this weekend. Um, do you have a preference when you come? Well, I think it's going to be really nice to be comfortable and not wet and sloshing around. But I, I got to say, you know, I live in Seattle. We don't get a lot of snow where I live. And the ambiance of a little bit of white around, I don't yeah. think it hurts too much. But at the same time, I, I do love it's more convenient to be out. And people will be walking the streets and, and getting out and shopping and, and just enjoying the bridge and all the ambiance of the people who'd come together to celebrate this film. And I mean, it, it's like if you watch the movie on television, you are in your own home, you watch it and, and that's great. But if you are in a group of other people and you all watch it together, yeah. oh my goodness, <laughs> it means so much more. It's so much more fun. <laughs> yeah, the first time I saw the movie, um, I must have been, uh, I had to guess I'd say I was eight years old, maybe nine. And my mother was wrapping presents up in her bedroom. And I came up and jumped on the bed, and the movie was playing. And it just started, and it was in black and white. And I, you know, I wasn't planning on, on sitting and watching the movie. I didn't even know exactly what it was until I asked my mother. But um, I was drawn in, and by the end of the movie, I just couldn't believe it. Um, you know what a great story and a great film it was and this was me as a youngster since then I've seen it maybe a hundred times um, but uh, yeah it's a it's an important part of the holiday season for so many people in the world it's a source of inspiration for so many people in the world and it's something that I you must take great pride in being involved in oh I'm, I'm I feel like it's such a privilege to be a part of this film and and people share their stories with me about how the movie has affected their lives, and it truly has. And we're talking uh, all over the world, not only here in the United States, but this is the second favorite Christmas movie in the United Kingdom. And, hmm. uh, you know, how wonderful that is. And we're going to go to the Gould tonight, the Gould Hotel, and we're going to be Skyping with a theater in England. And how you know they're showing mm -hmm. the film, and, and it's going to be so exciting. <laughs> and and you couldn't even um, imagine that. It, I'm sure back when you were filming the, the the movie, nobody could imagine that it would have turned out like this. Is in fact, for a while, the movie, <laughs> um, you know, kind of I don't want to say it went off into obscurity, but it wasn't until it started getting run on television, um, because for a while there, it was 
copyright free and and anybody could play it so during the christmas season it was everywhere for a few years in the 80s and um it was at that point that it really uh, you know reached icon or cult status is one of the greatest movies not only just christmas movies but greatest movies of all time and um and it was fun too for me as a resident here in seneca falls after watching the movie so many times to start to put the pieces together of oh yeah um, Bailey Park, that's Rumseyville, and the, and the bridge, and it is, uh, it's, it's just too too much, and the, all the cities that they mentioned. But again, I said, this isn't going to be about that. This is going to be more about your career in Hollywood and your relationships and your experiences. Um, so let's go all the way back to the uh, the set, which was, this was filmed in California, correct? That's right. And, it was uh, in, in July. In Los Angeles. Uh, it, it was filmed from April through July. And uh, that was kind of record time for those days. Mm -hmm. But I'd already done four movies before I did this one, so I was a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it? And how old were you when you played Zuzu in the movie? I was six. Six years mm -hmm. old. So, um, what was it like being? Was it, you know, what did, did it feel like work? Did it feel like fun? Did you, did you have to balance school with your time on the set? Well, you know, I was four years old when I started, so um, I didn't know any different. It was just another job, and I always enjoyed each one because for a little girl, you know, you do makeup, you do hair, you do wardrobe. It was like a, a land of make-believe, and when I saw the set of It's a Wonderful Life, I was born and raised in Hollywood. It doesn't snow there, right. so the snow all over that set was just so fascinating for me. Even though it wasn't real, it it was snow to me, mm -hmm. and of course, that was just another movie. Then I did The Bishop's Wife with Cary Grant, David Nevin, and Loretta Young, and each movie was a different experience, and I loved every minute of it. We did have uh, always a person from the health and welfare department mm -hmm. come, and they were on this stage always to see if the kids were treated correctly and if they weren't in any danger you know, under the hot lights too long or whatever. Yeah. And that person's responsibility also was to uh, be our teacher. So they had a one-room dressing room always on the stage, and that was where we did our schooling. And then mm -hmm. we'd do our schooling, and then they'd come knock on the door when they were ready for us, and we'd go back and we'd do our scene, and we'd come back and do school. So I never really got to get out of going to school. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you worked with Jimmy Stewart, and there was a picture with Cary Grant we just had up the on the screen. Um, at that age, did you realize what incredible you know, icons these men were that, that you were working with? And Donna Reed on the other side, just these folks that have become um, you know American icons did you realize back then you know the caliber of, of people you were working with I had no idea you know my mother and father just were normal ordinary folks and and I think they didn't tell me that these were famous people or mm -hmm. movie legends because they wanted me to act natural right. and um, so I had no idea I mean I just grew up with them I would go to the commissary and I'd say hi to Clark Gable you know yeah. I mean that's hello it. Carolyn <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the way it was yeah that's pretty uh, that's pretty neat uh, in in the filming of, of the movie was there any was there any favorite scenes of your yours in the movie well I, I always liked um, the end of the movie, and I also like, I, I really like the pedal scene, because that was pretty special yeah. with Jimmy Stewart. He was so gentle, and he was so kind, and, and, and one of the things that he did for me that I will never forget, I messed up a line in that segment, and he said, Th that's all right, Carolyn, you'll get it right the next time, mm -hmm. and I did. I did it, and I got it right, and so I sort of always remembered that this gentleman taught me that it's okay to make a mistake. Sure. And so that I, I carried that with me and still do. So, yeah, I mean, I really learned a lot. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, now, you've also worked with Bing Crosby. Oh, um, yes. Any stories from working with Bing Crosby or Cary Grant? <laughs> well, I played the part of Mary Elizabeth in the movie Blue Skies with Bing Crosby, and he played my father. And several years later, I was walking on the... This Paramount lot, and he was across the street. 
And he saw me and he said, hey, Mary Elizabeth. So I went <laughs> running over there and I started talking to him. And I, I told him, I just got a brand new dog last night. <clears throat> and he howled all night and I named him Bing. Oh, no kidding. And so I didn't realize it, but there was a person from a Variety magazine standing with him. And sure enough, that was in Variety magazine the next day. <laughs> wow. That's, that's amazing. Uh, so you're here in Seneca Falls for the It's a Wonderful Life Festival. Um, and the schedule and everything's online at therealbedfordfalls.com. Um, what's your weekend going to be like? Like when you come to Seneca Falls, how does it how does it usually play out? Is it a whirlwind weekend? Do you get to relax at all and enjoy the festival? It's a whirlwind weekend, but <clears throat> my enjoyment is meeting the fans. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm here for, and that's what I really, really enjoy. Hearing their stories about how the movie has affected their lives, all these things that are part of the festival. And uh, I really enjoy that. I enjoy talking about the making of the movie and uh, and all the giving them tidbits of, of how uh, we did things behind the scenes and and you know people really enjoy that because they want to learn about the film and I love to have that ability to be able to to share with them and uh, we're going to have a reception uh, for everyone that's involved in putting this, the film together at the Gould Hotel tonight and you know things you know, I began to meet the people in the town, so I always look forward yeah. just to, I feel like I'm coming home because I know so many people here. It's really great. Yeah, that's great. And it is, uh, I, I love Seneca Falls. I was born here. I went to high school here. I went to college at Syracuse, which isn't too far away, and then came back and lived here, and now I have a, my family's here. Um, and uh, the, the It's a Wonderful Life festival um, does have that feel of uh, it's coming home yeah yeah mm -hmm. and and we also produce a video here at finger lakes one for the the 5k race and a couple of years ago it was the year that we had all that snow <laughs> oh wow i went out and i asked everybody that i came across where you're from where you're from and houston texas florida you know every oh, absolutely it mm -hmm. was amazing and you always have heard that all oh, people come from all over the place, but that day when I actually went through and started asking one after another, it was amazing how many people travel. And that, I think, more than anything, speaks to the impact of, of the film, that people are so excited in the middle of December to come <laughs> north to upstate New York to celebrate the movie and to meet you and to take part in all the activities. It was I, That really was an eye-opener to me. And... Uh, what uh, what do you kind of see as the future of the film? Right now, it's it's kind of immortalized um, at the It's a Wonderful Life Museum on Fall Street in Seneca Falls. And, of course, it will be played every year. Not as much as it used to be, but you can count on, on seeing the film every year around Christmas. Um, do you think it's the type of film that will... 100 years from now, people will still watch it and feel the same way. Is it like a timeless type of thing? It is timeless. It addresses yesterday, it addresses today, <coughs> and it addresses tomorrow. And I really believe that people embrace this story in their hearts. And I'm old enough to have seen the generations. Like you said, when it started showing repeatedly in, yeah. in the early 70s through the 80s on every TV channel, I, I saw parents make their family sit down and it would be a tradition. Well then those kids grew up and they did the same thing with their children and it's just passing down through each generation and I have seen how that becomes a tradition and it, I mean it's just not Christmas until they watch the film. Mm -hmm. A lot of people watch it when they're wrapping their presents, a lot of people watch it when they're baking their cookies a lot of people watch it just to, like on thanksgiving night yeah, to thanksgiving, start a lot of people, the season right. you know i mean it's it's a tradition in so many ways and as i said it's it's really become popular all over the world i'm getting a lot of fan mail now from the countries who used to be under the communist rule where they weren't mm. not allowed to watch the films only government uh, re recommended so now they've discovered this wonderful movie and I get a lot of fan mail email from them so it, it's growing leaps and bounds I don't think it's ever gonna go away yeah no I don't either I agree with you 
now there's the whole Bailey family um, from the movie. Uh, do you keep in touch with with anybody else? Uh, any of your, your movie siblings from from the movie? Well, there's only five of us left, mm -hmm. and um, the Bailey kids. There are three Bailey kids. And we're very very close. Uh, Janie is like a sister to me, and she's a little girl that plays the piano. Yeah, and she's been up here in Seneca Falls as well. Oh yes, she comes every year. Mm -hmm. And little Tommy that burped. He's ver we're very close. The three of us are very very close. And then there's Vir Virginia Patton Moss, who played the part of Harry Bailey's wife, and she's still with us. So um, it's we talk to her once in a while, mm -hmm. but uh, us Bailey kids have a special bond. In fact, Carol Mueller, who played Carol Coombs Mueller, who played the part of Jane, mm -hmm. her son lives in my mother-in-law apartment in my backyard. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, that is pr that is so close. It's, we're pretty close. <laughs> Was this something that uh, continued right after the movie, or were those relationships kind of rekindled down the road? They were rekindled down the road. Um, in 1993, the Target store used It's a Wonderful Life for a theme that year in their stores mm -hmm. at Christmas. And they decided they would reunite the Bailey kids. And that's how we kind of got together again, and we started traveling all over the United States. That's when I discovered how big the movie really was. And uh, people would stand in line for hours, and they'd tell us the stories and tell about themselves and their relationship to the film. And that's when I figured out, wow, this is really, really something. And yeah. I wanted to be a part of that, meeting the people and, and traveling and listening to what they had to say. The movie has such a, a magical charm about it that it's it's like what you want for your family it, it's it's like yeah. you go back into that day yourself and you're right there with them and i think that's magic i think frank capra was a genius to be able to do this film and make it so wonderful and one of the one of the things i really want to share with you i'm so thankful when jimmy stewart donald reed and frank capra got their wings mm -hmm. they knew before they got their wings what the movie had become. And right. how, how special is that? Because it really was a bomb when it came out. No one ever knew that this would happen to that film. Yeah, which is, I find that hard to believe because it's such a great movie, but um, you know, it's 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 tough to say, uh, you know, with every year with the, grant, with the nominations for awards and stuff, everybody always debates it. It's hard to say what makes a, a movie catch lightning in a bottle. Um, there's been a lot of movies that I've loved over the years that, that maybe weren't as critically acclaimed, but, um, but this would seem like a no-brainer because there's certain parts of that movie that after watching it, well over a hundred times that I still, it still gets you, you know, it still chokes you up. Um, the, you know, when, when George is on the bridge and oh, he's yes. like, I just mm -hmm. want to get home, take me home. And then of course the end when everybody's in the house singing a lang sign, um, the, the one line obviously, um, <laughs> is, um, uh, to my big brother, George, that's the one, Yep, the richest mm -hmm. man in town. That's uh, the one that, that tweaks me. Yeah. That every time. It, that's the, the one that really says it all right there. Yeah. And I think, too, that um, there's, there's a science fiction a element to this holiday movie, too, because he's kind of, it's not time traveling, but the movie does go through so many periods of time um, in such a short uh, time of the movie, you know. Mm -hmm. It goes from when their kids sledding on the pond mm -hmm. to... Um, you know, to when George is, gets married and then has a family. Mm -hmm. So a great length of time is spanned in the movie. Um, but the element of being able to go back and see what life would be like if, if you weren't around, um, it, it's, it, the movie just has so much to it. It's, like I say, a science fiction element, um, um, the holiday element, and just um, the great story and, and so many great actors and characters. I mean, so many great characters in that movie, too. Uh, that uh, just add to the tapestry of of the film. Uh, so, it, well, Frank Capra was a perfectionist, and he even put um, 
when he's in the scene where Mr. Potter at the very beginning of the movie is coming down on him very strong in his office and and young George comes in and wants to know what to do about the poison pills mm -hmm. and and you see his desk well on his desk there were pictures portraits of his family and they were actually pictures of Jimmy Stewart when he was a young man a young boy just that they were really his baby pictures right so i mean capra was precise in what he did and it followed through throughout the film and that's another thing i think that really rings true when you watch the movie did you have any interaction directly with Frank Capra during any of these scenes? Did he direct you? Like he was a director. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> he directed me. <laughs> he would get he? down on his knees. Okay. And, and he'd look at you eye level, which was really great, because then he could get out of you what he wanted. Mm -hmm. When I come out the door and I'm so happy to see my daddy, 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 he says, Zuzu, my little ginger snap. Right. I can remember Capra said, now think how you would feel if you hadn't seen your daddy for a long, long time, and he came home. Right. How would you act? I want you to act like that. And, you know, easy, pe easy peasy, you know. Once mm -hmm. he told you what he wanted, and he always did, then you could do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, the greatest acting job of all the characters, I think, in that film had to be Jimmy Stewart. He was just amazing. And um, I had heard stories of other Actors were considered for the part, but Cary Grant, uh, yeah. For one. Do you think that 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 Cary Grant would have done a fine job, but Jimmy Stewart had to be perfect? It wasn't the same. Uh, Jimmy Stewart was perfect. He he was the ordinary guy. He was he was the little guy that Frank Capra was so good to champion for, mm -hmm. and I just don't think anybody else could have pulled it off as good. And you know, he was nominated for an award, Academy Award, and so was the movie. The movie was nominated for five Academy Awards, and it didn't win anything except yeah. a special mention for the making of the snow. Yeah, which so. was really just uh, uh, tons and tons of ice shavings, correct? The, the well, yes, but he also had something really different. When you uh, see the live snow falling and things like that, he actually had some chemistry background, and he mixed up a solution of some ingredients, but the main ingredients were fomite that you find in a fire extinguisher mm -hmm. and ivory soap flakes. Oh, wow. So that's what you see falling silently down. He mm -hmm. wanted silent snow because the snow before It's a Wonderful Life had made, at, made out of corn flakes. Too noisy. It would yeah. crunch. They had to dump, dub the voices over the crunching of the snow and, and it was too expensive. Expensive procedure. Yeah. yeah, well, it's certainly convincing. <laughs> I mean, there's never a time when you're watching that that you're not thinking that it's cold and snowy. Cold and winter. Even though uh -huh. it's July and 80 degrees or warmer in California. But you, if you look really close in some of the scenes, like where George is pulling Clarence out of the water, you'll see soap suds all over their faces. <laughs> 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 it's very obvious. And the water's foaming up in suds. <laughs> Everybody was clean, though, I think. Oh, it, I so. think they were. <laughs> well, um, so it's a it's a wonderful life festival in Seneca Falls this weekend, and I think it would be a good time for me to mention this uh, incredible calendar that's available um, at the It's a Wonderful Life Museum on Fall Street. And it, it's more than a calendar; it really is a, a it's almost a documentary or a book about the the movie. There's so many great photos, and there's all the key dates in the history of the film are are noted in here. There's pictures of you today in Seneca Falls, mm -hmm. Carolyn, and um, pictures of Zuzu from the movie. And um, for any fan of the movie, this is a great Christmas gift. It oh, it really is. It, it, uh, it kind of gives you the history of how Frank Capra bought the story. And the progression through each month that they took to um, make the film and the different things they did each month something different happened and that's all in the calendar and it's a celebration of the 70th anniversary of it's a wonderful life mm -hmm. i mean the, the i can't be that old <laughs> there's there's also just interesting little things like uh the call sheet for the shooting on a particular day has mm -hmm. some doodles on it that frank capra made and um 
Actually, the stage designer made those. Yeah, it's uh, okay. There's just a bunch of. But it's it's just treasures. Yeah, and it's it's a calendar, but like I say, it's more than a than a calendar. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's almost like a, a, book. a book. It really is. And so when the year's over and you turn the you're not going to probably throw this one out. You'll probably save it. Oh, you should. And so great and great photos um, in here. So and you can get there, like I said, at the It's a Wonderful Life Museum on Fall Street in Seneca Falls. And it would be a, a perfect Christmas present. So, well, Caroline, I really appreciate you coming in here. It was an honor to be able to talk to you. And it's almost surreal, as I said, because I've seen the movie so many times. And, uh, and so I really enjoyed the fact that you were able to come up here and we were able to talk about it. Well, thank you very much for having me because I feel like I'm with my friends that I've had for many, many years. So I love being here. Well, we love having you, and uh, it's going to be an it's going to be a wonderful weekend here in Seneca Falls. So yes, have fun, is. have fun. And, thank you. And uh, it's if you're looking for information on the festival, the real Bedford Falls dot com. Um, it goes throughout the weekend. And, of course, the It's a Wonderful Life Museum on Fall Street is open year-round if you can't make it up this weekend. So um, happy holidays, everybody, and um, we'll see you around town this weekend here in Seneca Falls.